my uniform formation hat on. Um, yeah, the the Asculab and Unified are like uh, more or less same companies. Just one is uh, more for the service part, and Unified Automation is more for the product side. Um, today, I will just give you a short introduction of what we are doing, and then why we think OPC UA is moving to the sensor level, um, and what we are doing for that. Um, so for uh, OPC UA, uh, we mainly support the whole life cycle of, of OPC UA. Um, so from building knowledge, so we, we offer training in different levels. Uh, then for building products, we have uh, different SDKs in, in different programming languages. And um, so like Java, we do together with Process. Um, and uh, like Uni mentioned in his presentation, there's, there's some transition phase. Uh, so you have a lot of installed base for OPC. Uh, so we have uh, uh, pr tools like UA Gateway that you can use to translate between the classic OPC and OPC UA in both directions. Um, and UA Expert is a heavily used test tool uh, to verify like uh, if an installed server works and also used by, by developers. Then we have a tool called UA Modeler uh, that is used by a lot of working groups for creating the information models, companion specifications. And the main purpose for us is to create then out of these models, create code uh, for the SDKs so you can directly turn your model into, into code that you can compile with, with, with the SDK. Um, for the for the SDKs, uh, we we have like tools for different um, programming languages, but also to scale on, on different levels. Um, like on the on the upper end, uh, Java and .NET SDK that's more used for IT enterprise systems, and and C C++ and and C C SDK more for the embedded uh, and low-end embedded uh, devices. Like I said, the, the UA modeler is a, is a very important tool. Um, it's, by a lot of people, it's just used for modeling and you can export the model as XML file. Uh, that is the standard machine readable format defined by OPC uh, UA. Uh, and that comes typically with, with these companion specifications. Um, but then you can use this tool also to, to load such models or the models you created for your own product uh, and you can create code uh, and then you more or less need to write the clue code to integrate your information of your product uh, with the information model but you don't need to take care about all the, the nasty details of OPC UA that's done by the, by the generated code. Um, on my theme about moving OPC UA down to the sensor level I want to use uh, injection molding machines as, as example. I have a few other examples, but this is uh, a typical thing we can see at the moment. Is uh, there is, um, and even for, for injection molding machines, there are working groups working on on companion specifications. Uh, so it's even a good example for showing how uh, the vendors work together to to make that happen. Uh, and in this case, Euromap is a it's a standardization group, uh, a European-based standardization group uh, um, for um, standards around plastic production and um, important part is, is injection molding machines. And they decided, uh, I think uh, two years ago, to define a, a standard interface of the controller to MES systems. Uh, and this is something that now, like all major injection molding machine vendors agree to and even uh, I think the last meeting had 60, 60 people in the room including a lot of MES vendors uh, and this is now release candidate. Um, and so what we see is like on the, on the MES IT side, uh, Java and .NET are, are mainly the main, the main uh, SDKs used there. Uh, we also see some C++ SDKs, uh, but on the, on the machine side, inside the controllers, 
it's, uh, it's mainly the C stack based, so C++ SDK and NCC SDK um, that is, is used on, on this side. Um, and then on the uh, a second working group that was started was to uh, integrate or to define the, the communication between the injection molding machines and handling systems like robots. So this is a, this is a second working group in that Euromap uh, standardization together with OPC Foundation. And there you see on the robot side, you see also like mainly C, C++ SDK uh, on, uh, on the robot controllers. And what's, what's added to that picture is OPC UA pops up over TSN. So they have real-time requirements. As you can imagine, if, if a robot is moving, uh, you want to make that based on the, on the right information provided from the machine or, or vice versa. Uh, so that, that, is the, that is the first companion specification that relies really on OPC UA pops up over TSN. Um, and so this is, this is a typical setup we see for, for different areas, different machine types. Um, that the external interface is, is, is moving to OPC UA and, and it, it's also driven by support by a lot of PLC vendors so it's, um, it, it's a win-win it's a situation for, for everybody. Um, but now where's, where's the sensor level coming in? And uh, what we see at the moment is based on that external connectivity um, the machine vendors also try to use OPC UA inside the machine. So even if, if it's their own decision, so it's not the decision of their customers or not, not pushed by their customers, uh, like if you go back to this one, uh, in, in the last meeting there was, uh, like Lego was, was in that working group meeting, and you can imagine Lego is one of the biggest customers for the injecting molding machine vendors, and they, they heavily push for OPC UA. Uh, and and they, they push for all the like security and all the, f the features and um, all the discussions where we talked about optional things, they always said, you can define it optional, but we will require it. Uh, so it was an interesting, interesting part of that, that, that working group. But, but to use it inside a machine is definitely not driven by, by their customers. It's driven by, by their needs. And the, the, what, what one of these uh, machine builders told me, they have up to 40 devices, uh, controllers, sensors, where they see potential OPC UA connectivity in the, f in the future. Um, and that's, that does not include every single temperature sensor, though, so I assume there are more than 40 sensors uh, and IOs in, in such a machine, uh, but still it's, it's, it's 40 devices inside the machine they, they can imagine to connect long term via OPC UA to their, uh, to their main controller. Uh, and that's a back off one. It's because we are at back off, so <laughs> um, I'm not sure uh, how, uh, w what kind of controllers are used in these machines. But um, <laughs> the the key thing is most of these devices are very res resource constrained. Uh, so even the, what what Eric said about his uh, Raspberry Pi, Raspberry Pi is a powerful PC compared to what they run in these. Uh, in these sensors and, 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 and controllers inside the machine. Um, so what, what you really need there is a, is a highly optimized SDK and tooling uh, for that purpose. Um, and I, we can see similar things in, like in wind turbines. Uh, in, in the first step was really to, to provide information from a, like a controller in a wind turbine up to MES SCADA level. Um, but now it's, since it's, it's, it's very heavily used in that area, uh, they also push it down to, to the to devices inside a wind turbine. Uh, and, and, we, and the same thing like where we see like in railway systems, uh, where they started with single, single devices to connect up. It's like the German railway system, they, they roll out a complete uh, separate network for diagnostics. So they have their safety network. Uh, and in addition, they build up a, a diagnostic network based on OPC UA for all of their different devices, like point controllers or signal controllers. And, um, and, but at the end, they want to monitor all, this, like, all the condition monitoring they want to do through OPC UA. Uh, so we see, like a, uh, let's say, the next step of OPC UA is moving one level deeper into, uh, into the sensors. Um, 
So what, what did we do to, to cover these new requirements? And so we, um, we, we looked at what we have today and like most of the C, C++ based SDKs toolkits are based on the, on the C stack that we developed uh, like in the early days of OPC UA and that we donated to the OPC Foundation. Um, but the problem is uh, you cannot really change that stack because you have so many applications that rely on it. <laughs> and uh, so you cannot really further optimize it. Um, and so the, the minimum requir resource requirement at the moment is we can go to one megabyte RAM and ROM usage, but you cannot really go s smaller. And for such sensor level devices, a lot of them, they want to go smaller. Um, and also the communication stack has a significant uh, part uh, or impact to the efficiency of the communication because all the, the, the message handling is, is, is done inside. Um, and so the, we, we decided to do a complete new development from scratch, so uh, no reuse of anything that was there. Um, and the goal was to scale down to like 150 kilobyte of RAM and ROM usage. Um, and also to improve performance communication, uh, communication perf performance of the communication and reduce, by that, also reduce CPU load. Uh, and to really, from the beginning, completely design it for very resource constrained devices. Um, and just to give you some, some insights here, this is a typical picture for existing SDKs. You have a, uh, a communication stack uh, that uh, we developed for different programming languages inside the OPC working group in the beginning. We did that like for C, for Java, for, for .NET. Um, and uh, so this is then the base for a lot of application libraries that build on top of these stacks. And that's what we provide as our main business model and, 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 and product is, is these, uh, these application layer libraries. Um, and so with, with the new one that we just released last week, uh, we have a few key features. I think I already said uh, low memory footprint, but um, one thing is like is important that you can create or uh, allocate all the memory if you want at, at startup and have uh, memory pools for different kind of, like you can define number of connections, number of uh, subscriptions, so everything you, that requires resources, you can pre-allocate and, and define what is, what is used. Um, one feature that is very important is, especially if you have, in a lot of sensors you have like more or less a fixed address space. Uh, and you can completely run that address space out of flash, so you don't need to load into RAM. Um, and what is else is interesting? Look, yeah, there, there's, a, there's a concept, a more enhanced concept for um, distributing load to different threads and, and processes, so you can even run uh, parts of, of the process in, in a sandbox. Uh, so if you have uh, environments where you, have, uh, where you can uh, run processes in a, in a special environment. Uh, and th there are parts of the OPCA communication that are more, uh, let's say, um, more dynamic and more interesting for hackers to attack. And if you ran, run that part of the OPCA server in a sandbox, uh, you, you can harden your system in terms of security. Um, and there are like different security backends and like what, what, Claire, what, what Eric said, uh, we are also working with, uh, with TPM module providers to, to directly integrate with their, with their chips because that's a very important part. So we think the, the sandboxing and, and the integration with TPM modules uh, will, will re really extremely harden the system in terms of se security improvements. Um, and so the, the, the the architecture of, of the new SDK is completely different, so you, you cannot find a stack anymore. There's just uh, different platform layer modules, um, like for networking, so you have, there are different networking backends, uh, different crypto backends, so we can support OpenSSL, but also other crypto libraries. And you can have different PKI app backends, so for example, integrating uh, different TPM modules or crypto chips uh, uh, over time. And then, you have the functional modules on top of that. 
uh, but there's no separation anymore between SDK and stack. Um, okay, so um, for us, applying OPCA to the sensor level, there are a few key factors that are relevant on this level. Um, one is uh, we do not really see OPC UA for I.O. communication on the sensor level. So there are, there are dedicated field buses op highly optimized for that part. And so there, you, will, you will not see a simple temperature sensor connected to a, a I.O. card of a PLC using OPC UA. That will not happen for a long, long, long time. But where we see OPC UA is, is uh, for condition monitoring. So additional information about, uh, about the devices and, the, and also uh, what is very important, like configuration. So to have a flexible, dynamic configuration, self-describing devices, that's the strength of OPC UA. And we see uh, like a lot, of, lot more requirements in this area and that, that, that pushes OPC UA down to that level. Uh, and what, what also comes with TSN is this converged network so that Today you have, you have specialized real-time networks uh, where you connect your device's sensors to a PLC and from the PLC you have your regular Ethernet uh, connections. And with TSN uh, you will see real-time and non-real-time communication on the same, same network. And that, that is important to, to, to make use of these features because otherwise you always need to run through gateways from your real-time uh, Ethernet to, to non-real-time Ethernet. Uh, so this is a uh, long term, that's an that's a important part of the story. Um, so we, you need OPC UA implementations that fit the requirements for putting OPC UA into these little devices. So we think with our new uh, high performance SDK we, we fulfill these requirements. And availability of PubSub is also a very important step um, because it also can reduce resource consumption for subscriptions in, in smaller embedded devices. Uh, and so therefore we also drive, uh, sorry, we drive the PubSub standardization. Um, so we do the editing for the spec stuff and we also lead the, uh, the PubSub prototyping and most of the prototypes are using our C++ SDK at the moment. Okay, so that was my, my presentation for Unified Automation. Thank you.